everybody. It's Michelle again. I'm back with the fourth and final uh, tutorial discussion about Cricut Design Space, the edit features and functions under the layers panel. So we are have discussed slice, weld, and attach in um, series one, two, and three. So the link to those are all um, under in the description box. So I would recommend to watch as many of these videos as you can. And I'm not just saying that to kind of plug myself. I have no kind of vested interest in this, but other than to kind of help people out, help the frustrations to a minimum. But there, even though the, um, the function I might be talking about is not the one you had questions about or issues with, I have kind of touched on um, different functions, like say I was talking about attach, but I also kind of mentioned slice within the attach video and some other functions of the slice. And so um, I just think it's important to kind of watch as many of these as you can, not just mine, but other videos to just kind of help you uh, learn as you go and trial and error and that's basically how I learned. I wouldn't consider myself an expert. I wasn't trained other than just trial and error. So these last two features and functions uh, don't have a lot of uh, multiple layers of their usage. Uh, they're fairly straightforward. So I'm going to combine the two of them in this one video. So um, we're going to talk about flatten first and flatten we're going to kind of see if the description will pop up. There we go. So it's going to merge layers to a single printable image. And so printable is the keyword there. You only use flatten if you plan to print, then cut your design. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up kind of a multiple layered image. Um, let's just pull up. Let's see what kind of dog pictures they have. Dogs are always cute. So we want one that's kind of has multiple layers and features. So let's see. How about this little Scotty dog just because it's St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Well that's Scottish, not Irish. Duh. Uh, let's see. I need to find a cute one. These guys aren't bad. Those little trio. I'm going to get rid of that Scotty dog. Okay, here we go. So we have a trio of pups here. And you'll see that um, together they all make for a pretty uh, layerful image. So say we want to um, print this out and turn this into like a little sticker or um, just whatever your heart desires for your project. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and flatten it. And you'll see what happens. Oh, the cut lines that surrounded that went away and now it's kind of a smoother looking solid one layer image. Um, one thing about the flatten feature is that if you wanted to make any color changes, you need to do that before you flatten because if not, it is going to print these exact colors like if you wanted the tags, if you'd prefer those to be blue, um, you're going to actually need to go back and unflatten it first and change whatever tags. See, one of them will be blue and the other one will be kind of, we'll do purple. Okay, so then even though it looks flat and it says that it's print, we need to still make sure we go back and flatten it again so that it goes to a single, that's the whole idea of flatten. Even though you've got something set to print, you need it to be in a single flattened image for it to all kind of combine and weld together. You can do the same thing with text. Um, we can just write puppies. And um, this text happens to be one, the default that, um, I think it's called Cricut Alphabet, yeah. Um, it has a kind of a shadow layer that's hidden. So let's turn that on just to make it a little more interesting. And I'm just going to change that to, well, it's kind of hard to read. Let's do like yellow. 
Okay, that's good. So um, now we're going to want to, since it's in two layers, we're going to want to flatten that. And now this is printable. So if we wanted this entire thing together, we want to make sure we're going to attach this or flatten them together, really, rather, I'm sorry. Because flatten is kind of a similar feature to attach, but in the print form. You, if you want it to look exactly the way it is right here, if you want it to print that exact way, you need to make sure if you've got more than one thing, you're going to have to highlight everything and flatten it all at, as one. So we'll um, just go to the preview screen to see what that looks like. Usually takes a minute. Okay, so there's our puppies. And one thing about um, the print then cut feature and something you may notice is that the the dogs have um, a little bit of a blurriness to them. They, they looked a little bit more clean and crisp on the um, design screen versus here. Um, and that is because uh, it defaults to have this bleed on for print and cut. And what the bleed is, is it adds an extra little cushion of the um, design to cut out so that if there are kind of smaller areas, it kind of lessens the chance of it maybe accidentally cutting out part of your design. So if I were to turn that off, it kind of cleans everything up and smooths and smooths it out just a little bit more but we'll keep that bleed on just to kind of give us that buffer for when it cuts it out. The other things you are maybe noticing on this screen is that our material size is actually eight and a half by 11, even though our Cricut mat is 12 by 12 or some cases 12 by 24. Um, as of right now, design space will only allow you to uh, print and then cut on eight and a half by 11 size sheets. And the other thing, and this kind of varies from browser to browser, like I'm in Chrome, Google Chrome right now, but um, the, the uh, size of the area that it'll allow you to print and cut, see if I move this around, you'll see like the little boxes around it. It's actually smaller than what the material size is. Google Chrome will only allow you to do, I want to say it's five and a half by eight. Um, I've got it pulled up back here. Yeah, Google Chrome, their printable area is a five and a half by eight. Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari all have six by eight and a half. So they give you a little bit more cushion. So if you switch from one browser to the other, you may have to go in and check your... Um, your uh, settings to make sure that you can still print. So um, you can manipulate this around, but just be aware that you may get an error if your um, image is too big. Like let's just let's just go ahead and try and make this pretty big, and then we'll go. Oops, printable image is too large. Please reduce. So that's something that some people see and they don't realize, and it's kind of a weird feature. I don't really understand why it won't let you print um, to that entire area. But anyway, so that's how the flatten feature works is it prepares your work to print and you don't ever need it for any other reason. No matter how many people might recommend, oh, I want these two to attach to each other. So flatten them together. No, you don't want to do that unless you're planning on printing. So the next feature we'll move on to is the contour. So let me um, unflatten these. And then in the puppies, I'm going to um, unflatten that as well. And then I'm going to change all of these back to cut so you can see. One thing I really wish that you could do, if you had a grouped image, that there was something you could do to just turn on for every single piece of the layer so that I, you don't have to go and click through all this stuff. So maybe in the new design space that's coming out, I don't know if a feature like that would be available, but that would be amazing. Okay, so let's get rid of the puppies. So what contour does, let me kind of hover over that show you what it says. It's going to hide or unhide lines on a layer. 
So we're just, we're hiding or unhiding the cut lines. We're telling it, I don't want you to cut that. Um, I want to keep, so um, for example, in these puppies, maybe you didn't want them to have these little brown splotches or you didn't want it to have that little brown eyeball. So what I can do in, let's just do one of the puppy layers. It's going to be this little tiny guy with the blue collar. I'll highlight him in my um, layers panel. Um, he must only have one contour. He must not really have, let's go to the contour here. Oh, I know what it is. I do this every time and I'm glad that I did it because it's something I can show you. Um, you can't do contours on a grouped image. You have to have everything separated so that you can kind of single them out. So we'll ungroup it. And then now we can pick our little puppy and we'll go to contour and we'll see that he kind of gets um, singled out and it turns to this kind of bluish purple. And this shows us our two different contour options. So I can either turn off the main color and he'll turn completely to that dark brown or we can go back to contour, turn that back on and I can get rid of his little eye circle. Um, one thing you can't do though in contour is you can't turn both of these off. Say maybe you didn't want his eye or his body color. Um, sorry, you can't hide the, all the contours of a shape. If you just wanted to get rid of that in general, you could just go over here to your layers and just turn that off. Whoops, that was the wrong dog. Where is he? Oh, he's only showing the contour. It threw me off. So we could just turn him off all the way so that he's a solid brown. Um, so we can, we'll go back and get him. You can select like a whole group like that. Or actually that's just a solid layer. And kind of turn off some of these. So that's just basically a contour is just telling it I want to hide certain cut lines within the design. Um, that looks terrible. I can't see those ears, so we'll turn those back on. So anyways, that's how the contour works. Uh, there's kind of no other fancy features really to it. It just um, helps you to clean up a multiple layered um, design. W one thing that you just have to be sure of, and we learned that lesson together, is that um, you have to make sure everything is ungrouped in order to um, achieve the contour, to get the contour to work. So I believe that concludes the um, series that I plan to do on those five functions. I'm going to try to work through maybe some other ones uh, once I come up with ideas of, or if there's little designs that I see people ask questions about a lot, how to achieve a certain look or um, whatever. So um, I'll, I'll be on, on the lookout for those. But if you have any specific questions you can think of now or some troubleshooting issues, maybe just um, put it down in the comment below. And or if you have any other ideas of uh, videos to do, I can attempt that. So um, thanks for watching this series, guys. I hope you got some info from it. I hope it was more encouraging than discouraging because I know that it can be discouraging sometimes when you really have your heart set on a certain design and you just can't figure out how to get it to work. So keep working at it and just keep practicing and you'll learn a lot more. And um, I hope this was helpful for you. So thanks so much for watching.